Hey guys, Adam back here in the AeroWorks workshop and we're going to be talking about part two of the fuel system and we finally got some parts in that we're waiting on and one of them was this new fuel valve that Viking Aircraft Engines puts out. Now if you're not familiar with it, um, there have been some talk about weight balance issues and, all, and basically all of the, uh, the Zenith aircraft, different pilots have uh, complained about that. And what this valve basically allows us to do, when you're running an engine other than like a Lycoming or Continental, which has a left, right, or off valve, will be to balance the fuel load left to right. So they, they put together this nice stainless steel valve. They'll put in whatever, whatever kind of fittings you want, whether that's AN fittings or barbed fittings for the rubber fuel hose. Um, it comes with a bracket that's marked R and L. And it's designed to go up on the over arch right behind your head. So basically as you're flying along, you notice that maybe the right tank's burning more fuel. I simply reach up, switch to the left tank, and now I'm burning off the left tank or the left tank is draining fuel into the header tank. So it gives us the ability to really balance the fuel out on a long cross country. And in something like the Super Duty, I'm not putting an autopilot in this. I'm keeping it fairly simple. I do have the Dynon screen and the Dynon avionics but I didn't want to put the extra money and the extra com complexity into the, uh, the Super Duty. I wanted to keep it more of a stole aircraft, but I do plan to do long cross countries because I want to get out and visit you guys. And one of the things that we're going to have to do, deal with is the fuel balance. So this valve will solve that problem. But what I want to do, because it is made to go up on that upper archway, I do want to put my seats back in, or at least my, my pilot seat, Put the rails in, put the seat back in, even though it takes a little time, I want to do it right. And I want to actually see where does that valve need to be located? What's the best angle for my arm, you know, to reach back and do that? I tore my rotator cuff a few years back and I kind of have difficulty reaching in certain angles. So uh, with the bracket that's basically, uh, you know, four A5 rivets, uh, you pretty much can position this anywhere you want along there. And then you just adapt your fuel lines to come in uh, to the length you need. Um, you could actually probably put it like this if you wanted to, but I think it's really designed to be on the back of the archway like this. And if you're looking at it close up here, you'll see that you'd have like your left fuel line would come in here, your right fuel line would come in here, and then your feed back to the header tank would come out here. And a lot of people say, well, how does that work? It's higher than these two here. But this is actually, all this here is still lower than the wing tank, so that's not an issue. And basically, like I said, it's just a 180 degree turn. So if you're on... This tank here, in this case, would be the left. Switch it to right. Now we're burning off this one. That's what's gonna come out of there. So let's take a look at where it's going in the aircraft, and then we're gonna work on getting the seats put in and getting it installed. Well, back in with the seat rails and the seat. Had to put this back in so I could hop in the seat and make sure I could reach the fuel valve. All right, guys, well, after putting the seats in and reaching back, it looks like we're gonna put it pretty much where everybody else has been putting it. And that is this right upper channel and the top overlap here, it's up against that and over against this. That puts it favoring the right side, but it also puts it to where it's comfortable to reach up and uh, grab it. Now what we'll probably do, um, we'll probably put, again to keep things clean, I'll probably put a small hole through this channel, big enough for the fuel line to go through, and that will uh, allow us to connect and then go through this one here the right side will follow the channel along and the left side will follow the channel along and go right out to the wing pass through. So we'll, on the side of the aircraft, the front pass through will be the fuel lines. The rear pass through will be a 90 going to the tank, the header tank. So it'll come through the sidewall and go directly back. So that's what we're going to get working on doing. We're going to get mounting up this plate. We'll take off the valve. We'll mark our holes, drill it up, give it a, get it put on there and then go from there. Now, one of the things that Jan had talked about in uh, his valve video was that this particular valve comes with this 180 degree turn knob on it. And from the factory, all the knob had on it was uh, the, the stem is rounded on the sides and flat on two sides. And then it had as a set screw on there. So what Jan and the team did there was they set, they cut a groove in here to allow this set screw to actually go into 
that groove because the last thing we want is our valve to fall off in the middle of flight. And that will be essentially impossible once the handle is put on, put some blue Loctite on this and set it all the way down. There's no way that's gonna come out of that groove and or the stem and then you'll have just nice smooth operation. So I just wanted to show you that detail before we got putting it into the aircraft. Know that there's a notch cut out for the Allen head set screw. And again, I would recommend putting some blue Loctite on there just to keep it from backing out. Snug it up tight with the blue Loctite and uh, you're all set. Facing down, this is gonna be here. We're gonna slide it over here. So it's got a nice spot. You can't really mess up the spot here. So that's where I would re recommend putting it. You guys come up with something better, let us know. So I'm gonna put it tight against the top, tight against the right, I'm gonna drill a hole right here. We'll go ahead and put it on there for positioning. And we will drill our remaining holes. in position. I'm going to go ahead and hold this tight up. I'll do this one right here. Easy peasy. more holes, we'll clean them up, and we'll be good to go. Alright, there is our holes. We'll go ahead and touch those up real quick, and we'll be good to go. Good. No shavings at all. Ready to rib it on. I think for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, tweak it up. I guess we need to move it for any reason, but it's basically all set and ready to go. But you know how it goes. There's always something you end up going, oh, I need to take that off really quick. So I'm going to hold off on the final rivet for right now. Because we may have to, uh, like I said, we may be drilling a hole through here to get our uh, top feed through here. And uh, that's what we'll work on figuring out next. Show you a tip that I've been doing. Uh, whenever you have a custom size hole that you need to drill, in my case, I took the, uh, the fuel line plug out because the actual nut on the fuel line is smaller than this, but just barely smaller. So I took a measurement off this. Uh, I got about 20 millimeters, which was, even though I could go to one of these knurls and get 20 with 2 millimeters, 20 was enough to, to clear the size of the nut. So basically, I'm going to go with 20. So I take out my unibit and uh, making sure that I use the jaws in the same spot, find the ridge that is my 20. This one would be under 20, so I'm going to go to this one here. And then basically, you just take a piece of electrical tape and put a line where I don't want to go past that. That way, uh, as you're drilling through, you think you're going to remember the notch, but sometimes you go too much or not enough. So I put a line on there so that when I bump up against that tape, I know that's where I want to stop. Now, I can always remove the tape if I need to take off the edge, but at least when I get to that, that ledge there, I know that I'll be at my 20 millimeters, and I can stop there and check the uh, whatever I'm trying to fit up. So this comes in handy for all kinds of things. So anytime you're using a unibit, or you're not using a standard drill bit size, um, you're trying to match up something, just use your micrometer and uh, you know find it the closest one and then you can go to that notch. So just a little tip from the workshop. So lucky for my daughter, she was the one that got to crawl in the rear access hole 
to get into the uh, empennage or the rear of the fuselage to mark the holes for the fuel lines that will be passing through the back baggage wall. Now, what we did is we used a little circle for our template. She marked a center hole, which we used a drill, angle drill to do a pilot hole. And then using that unibit that we showed you earlier in the video that we marked up, she then opened up that hole to the uh, size that we wanted it for the grommets that we would be using. So just took it slow and, uh, you know, stopped at that final hole size, kind of checked it, uh, the edges with our fingers, made sure it was nice and smooth. And if it wasn't, just use that last little bit of the unibit to kind of champ for that hole out and everything turned out great. Hey guys, Adam here in the jump seat of the Super Duty, and uh, this is not a place I'd probably want to sit if I was flying. Uh, I think this is more for kids or a small adult. If you're over five foot, which I'm almost six foot, and a bigger person, it's going to be a little snug in here. Uh, so this will probably be a normally a baggage area, or we'll have a the small kids back here. But I wanted to show you. Uh, it's easier to kind of show you the fuel line system here with the Viking fuel valve and how I laid it out to keep a really clean install. So I'm going to pause the video, turn it around, and show you what we got. All right, so what we have here, this is the left side of the fuselage. This is, of course, the uh, cabin door right here. We have our fuel line is the forward line. It's coming through a straight pass-through fitting, AN fitting, directly across. I've got an AN or, a, excuse me, an Andel clamp here. It'll be securing that just from any droop, and then it comes directly across into the fuel valve. Now, I don't have the knob on here right now. On the right side of the aircraft, same thing. We've got the fuel valve, or excuse me, the fuel line coming in, going directly into the right side of the valve. The output of the fuel valve comes out the top, goes through here, loops around, through the top of the channel, out the back of the channel, and through the back baggage wall where I'm still putting grommets in. This will also probably have a small Adele clamp just to keep this snug. So you can see it's a very clean install. We don't have anything drooping down or hanging down. Now on the left side, we've completed the vent line. So the rear fitting is a pass through 90 degrees. So it faces the back. It makes an immediate 90 towards the back where it passes through that channel comes out the other side and then follows through and goes into the baggage wall. And again, this, we could put an Adele clamp on here. It's not probably super required, but just to keep it clean and keep somebody from hanging something on there, we'll probably put another clamp there. So that's the left side vent. The right side vent we have not installed yet, but it's the same thing. Here's that right angled AN fitting headed right to the back. That's what the bottom hole's for. It will come through this bottom hole and it'll exit out this bottom hole and go to the vent. So two vents, one main fuel line. And a lot of people say, well, what about this T? It's higher than the inputs. But if you look at where we're at here, the wings are actually higher than the fuel valve and even this top fitting. So no issues with gravity feed or anything there. So just a quick shot from in here in the Super Duty, looking at the fuel system. Uh, we're getting close to wrapping this up. And uh, all we'll have left to do is uh, actually just the rubber hose on the bottom of the aircraft. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap up this video for the fuel system part two. Uh, in our next video, we're going to be doing uh, a different component of the aircraft. And we'll give you a little teaser here in just a second. All that's left to do on the fuel system is the bottom rubber hose, which we'll be doing in a future episode. It's not really a part three, but it'll be part of a future episode. Hope you guys are enjoying the build. I know I'm enjoying it. Uh, learning and building uh, this aircraft has been a dream of mine a challenge, a uh, reward, kind of everything in between. But, uh, you know, the goal is to uh, have a beautiful, fun aircraft to fly, and that is the direction we are going. Uh, so, again, guys, if you're liking the videos, if you're getting some enjoyment out of it, some, some content, uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to hit that notification bell. We skipped this last week's live video, but we will be doing another live video in the very uh, – near future so you want to make sure you hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the channel goes live with a live video gives you a chance to join in ask questions uh in a live uh you know situation so that you can get your answers uh right away and uh just to show you what we've been working on the last few days we have uh one wing here on the table bottom sides all riveted up so Moving along with that, we'll be covering a lot of that in the video as well as some time-lapse video. 
of the wing being put together. So until next time, guys, it's Adam and the AeroWorks Workshop. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay safe. Merry Christmas. We'll see you on the next video.